River Drive. I will not be participating in as much as I am in butter. What's the uh, street address for River Drive? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The address was 319? Yeah. 319 River Drive? Yeah. And a letter from the access. There were um, a couple of issues that um, were identified that need to be addressed before, uh, for this. Um, this site. Uh, the first one was access. You're concerned about making sure that the town had access to the site because you're going to be co-locating on that tower. And uh, two things. One, uh, there is provisions in the lease, which I will uh, leave with you, uh, which provide for co-location so that the um, property owner, our landlord, has um, approved co-location and you know, so other users on the tower. And just for belt and suspenders, um, I did get a letter from um, the Johnsons who own, they're owners of the property, just confirming that um, you have, you're permitted access to the property. And they said, as the owner of the property and the less owner of the land uh, lease agreement with Belt Atlantic Mobile, Massachusetts, um, permission is hereby granted to the town of Hadley to access the future wireless telecommunications tower site for the purpose of installing or maintaining its equipment pursuant to the terms of the lease. So we have this in, as part of the record. Just a quick question on that. Okay. Will that stay with the land, or if a different landowner owns it? They would so take it subject to the lease, as long as the lease is in place. So those terms are part of the lease. So just the same as our equipment's going to stay on there if they sell the property subject to, to our lease. Um, and then um, another issue um, that was uh, brought up was another looking at another site, looking at a town site at um, 16 Stockbridge Street, which is a um, a sewer pump, sewer pumping station. And um, we did uh, had our engineers and everybody look at this site, and we did talk to the uh, head of DPW, and um, Dean Gustafson can talk to you about a conversation that he had. And it turned out to be a problematic site in that there's underground pipes that it's a small site. It's 0.11 acres, and it um, and because of the un underground infrastructure, we wouldn't be able to put in our foundation. We wouldn't be able to put our tower. Um, we even did a mock-up of what we might be able to do. We looked at different configurations on the site, and. Um, we were unable to find something that would, would work at that site. We also felt that it was not suitable due to the fact that there is, it's a more residential area than where we're siting. Um, so there, and there's a house within, I think, 75 feet is the closest. Yeah, there are. Right, Dean, if you want to just, and then talk about your conversation also, just for the record. Uh, good evening, folks. My name is Dean Gustafson. I'm a senior environmental and wetland scientist with All Points. Working on behalf of Rise and Wild, so I'm just going to hand out a couple of graphics to help explain our analysis of the town's pump station property. And it's known as pump station number seven. Um, I spoke with Mike Pequinot, who's uh, administrative assistant in the wastewater division, and um, talked to him about the the property. It's a, essentially a postage stamp size parcel is 100 feet deep by approximately 45 feet wide at the front edge on Stockbridge Road and in the rear it's about 47 and a half feet in width. Um, there's an existing pump station uh, house on there that's about 60 feet off the road and there's also a paved drive on the western side um, and there's the sewer trunk line runs along Stockbridge Road so this pipe uh, piping that uh, extends from the pump house out to Stockbridge Road. So essentially the frontage of the property is encumbered by underground utilities. 
Um, in addition to uh, those physical constraints, uh, we looked at some uh, um, additional resources in the area um, to more fully assess this as a potential candidate for a tower site. And there are some additional concerns associated with this parcel. There is an intermittent stream that runs right along the west side of the parcel. Uh, it runs right along the, uh, the property boundary. So that would require filing a notice of intent with the Conservation Commission for any activities on that property um, because we'd be within a uh, 100 foot buffer zone of any activities on that site. In addition, uh, we're only 400 feet away from the historic district with that parcel uh, as opposed to 1,800 feet for the proposed site at 319 River Drive. Uh, there's also uh, greater concern for visual impacts with the tower at this location. Uh, particularly its close proximity to nearby residences. There are four homes within 250 feet of that parcel and that's shown on one of the maps that we produced. Uh, there's one that's only 75 feet away um, to the east. And also that, that property is, is encumbered by Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program, um, both their estimated habitat for rare wildlife as well as prairie habitat for, for rare species. Uh, so there are multiple concerns uh, beyond the actual physical constraints on trying to so develop the a tower. Other, so is the other site. Right? That's true. Yep, the other site has the same issues, although we have a sign-off letter from Natural Heritage um, that we submitted to the Conservation Commission as part of our uh, request for determination of applicability, which we received a negative determination from the Conservation Commission last June. So. Regarding the visual impact, again, we're um, mimicking some exhaust stacks that are already on the site, so there is already some disturbance in that respect that we're going to just be copying, whereas there is no other element that we would be able to copy on this site, so it would be some, and, you know, introducing something new visually on that site. And, and Carla could maybe explain a little bit more detail, but we did a mock-up of trying to uh, fit a facility on this property. The only way it would potentially work uh, as far as space uh, constraints go would be in the frontage. Um, however, that would require putting a foundation um, on top of the sewer line um, as well as the structure. So there would be encompasses uh, over that underground utility which um, wouldn't uh, meet any type of uh, requirements for, for the wastewater division. So this is the kind of analysis that would go through the sites, and this is one that we would check off as one that would not be a suitable site for us. You're welcome. So getting back to the Johnson lease, you have a signed lease with them already. Yes. Is it normal procedure that a lease is signed before a board gives approval, right. especially yeah. given the fact that Existing yeah, we get zoning, control of the me, site. Especially since existing zoning bylaws don't allow for this type of structure there. We get control of the site and we have contingencies within our lease that it's subject to. Everything, so. Just the same with the town lease. We sign it so that we are able to come before you and say we have control of the site. And then we have carve outs for you know ability to terminate a lease if we're not able to you know obtain their approvals. So we don't do anything until we know that we have that site. So you have contingencies in the lease that allows for us not giving approval. Would you anticipate that under the federal law that you cited last week? That well, we, no, we, we hope we, we don't have to. Uh, and I, since I've been doing this for over 15 years, we've never had to terminate a lease. So We've had leases where we've decided for other reasons that we're not going forward, but not you know, because we couldn't get the approval. Have, have there so. been any challenges? to that federal law, given the fact that in Hadley, at least, our zoning bylaws don't allow for this type of structure there yet. There's a number of cases, and I submitted a, a memorandum with the application with other cases where they, the Telecommunication Act does, does allow boards flexibility uh, to, and especially in your case where you have a waiver provision, some uh, ordinances and bylaws don't have waiver provisions, but yet they give the flexibility to boards to, um, to still give approvals because so not be in um, in violation of the Telecommunications Act, which says that you can't deny coverage, you can't you know um, enact rules, regulations that would need to be um, regulating against having coverage in the town. And in this case, because of the narrowness 
and lim you know, limitations on the on the district that was created many years ago when this was first when these um, you know towers were first erected. Um, you know that you do have that flexibility to uh, to waive the overlay district. And I don't know if I if you heard from your council. I, I did. I did speak to Joel Bard, um, and he uh, did say that the. Absent the waiver provision, you'd have to go to the ZBA for a variance, and he would have to advise the ZBA to grant the variance, even though you had no basis for asking for one under Chapter 48. Right. We go under the telecommunications act. So, uh, so um, it's sort of a distinction without a difference that uh, um, we do seem to have the leverage in this circumstance. Forgive me. Mr. Chairman, for asking questions. I'm a new kid on the block. You know, I know, I know about I, I, know, That's, I, I yeah. mean, those were my notes to, to explain that to you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know much about being on the planning board, but I'm right. No, absolutely. And this is this is something new that does you know that's not standard. And um, I wasn't sure whether you were able to talk to to Joel okay, or not. Thanks. So I was prepared to still argue that you have the authority under the Telecommunications Act to use the waiver provision. Those are the three outstanding items, as far as I remember. Uh, just, just one question. Uh, I noticed in the, uh, the site on East Street where the, the police station is, uh, you're only going to take up 382 feet, square feet, for your site. Uh, that's at least with the town. And you said you can't squeeze something 382 feet in just to somewhere in there that wouldn't be over the sewer line? Carla? That's not very big, 19 by 18. Good evening, I'm Carlos Centauri from Centec Engineering. Um, I'd like to I'll just pro send out, put out a sketch that we put together of where, if we could locate a, a tower on this site or a facility on this site, what space we have to work with. And I'll point out that it's a great sketch that shows a tower location, but it can't be built because of the piping on the ground right in that area. Um, it's the, the rear, the, 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 I'll call it the front of the property, um, has enough area to locate a tower. Um, if need be, we could locate the tower on the back side of the property where there is no piping, but we'd still have the equipment shelters that would need space to, to locate. Uh, and uh, it's not something that the, the local uh, Department of Public Works wanted to see uh, structures located over their pipes that are running to the pump station. Why do you need such extensive equipment shelters here and not at the East Street location? We are doing the same, same, same yeah. exist, same uh, location, same. Uh, East Street is the, the town owned property. Verizon does have a shelter that they're building there. It's 12 by 24, just like this one. Uh, this is showing expansion for a future carrier here um, so that the facility could be utilized by more than one carrier. Should another carrier want to come in the area, you wouldn't have to put up another tower. Um, at, the, at the town owned facility, um, the, the RFP, from what I understand, was to provide for Verizon Wireless and the town's equipment, which is located inside the building, so provisions for ground space were not taken as part of that application. Should the town want to move forward and find other co-locators for that site, they'd have to revisit their site plan to locate other equipment on the ground, and it would require more space. What would you sell? The, I mean, certainly you, you missed met with Mr. Pequinot, but he doesn't have any authority to give you any permission one way or the other. It's really That's the correct. Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen was really enthusiastic about the additional revenue that this would create. Have you gotten their approvative approval, uh, I, or nay? I think, I, I think whether we would receive an approval or not, it's not advisable from a, purely from an engineering standpoint to, to locate structures over a, a Primary, the primary use of the parcel is for for uh, for a pumping station. If there were nothing on the ground here, uh, I'd say we'd have a, a viable solution for a site. But right, the space that we have available, or the space that's available there, is is uh, is being used by for another use. Although it's not visible above ground, there's another use occurring. There. We worked very hard to make sure that the visual impact was minimal, which we believe would be at the site where we're proposing, as opposed to the site where it would not be the case. 
and will be close to the residences. Yeah, on the on the. Uh, I mean, you you have it located in the front. It's obviously located behind, and you wouldn't have to. But uh, I would actually, in in looking at this, one of the things we we thought of until we we did get some additional input was to look at an alternative location of putting the tower behind the pump house but it would still uh, not give us any space to put the ground equipment. We would have had to put that in the front and run our cables back. But again, we'd have our ground equipment over the top of the piping. No, no, you wouldn't. Well, okay. And we did have a letter that we submitted from the select board in support of our site on, at, on River Drive, which is part of your record. We have that already. Yeah. They were not aware that there was this option <laughs> at the time, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. I think they're anxious to get something for public safety up, and even if that were a good site, we'd be talking a year from now still, yeah, hoping that we would be the winning bidder and going to town meeting. Back there. I mean, so but it would be in the district. Well, I, <laughs> I, um, I don't think this is a viable site. <laughs> so. We're giving you testimony tonight to say that that was a, a site that we could consider, we wouldn't consider. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's very close to the historic district, so there are going to be concerns with placing a facility that close to the historic uh, from the Mass Historic Commission. Um, and all it's things news to us, there's no historic district here. There, there is just to the south. Not a town approved one. Not a town. Now there's no town historic site. Historic, there's no town historical district in this area. <clears throat> Maybe in the center, center, of North, center of North Hadley, but that stops about three quarters of a mile away. Well, look, according to the mass historic records, there is well, that is that, part of the that historic district. That they're wrong. So, town town so meeting uh, vote did not did not go that far. But and from a visual impact standpoint, you're significantly closer to residences. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just making a statement that it's not near his okay. We can put on the record that we our nearest residence is 650 feet versus 75 feet for this other site. Just another reason why it would not be a viable site for us. Well, I, you know, having drafted the wireless bylaw, I think that was implicit in saying town land wherever located, that there was an understanding that we might get a tower on town land wherever located. So um, I don't think visual impact would be a factor. So if residents of, if residents of the town came in and were that they, you know, They're free to come in, so that, uh, that would be, you know, people are free to attend these hearings if they want to. Um, but the way the bylaw was written and approved by town meeting did contemplate um, mm -hmm. town uh, property wherever located. Well, I think, again, and I think we, it stops at the, our testimony that engineering-wise it wouldn't work and it wouldn't work with the town uh, based on the use of the site and the location of the underground infrastructure. If I may, Mr. Chairman, um, Attorney Mike Fenton for Verizon Wireless, Chad Schwartz and Fenton in Springfield. I'd also point out to the board that because of the proximity to the closest residence, this would pose a danger potentially to that residence, particularly in regards to the bylaw that requires the tower to be two times the height of the tower away from the dwelling. But you've established we have waiver authority. It's not a residential house, the other structures is my point. Anybody have any other comments? Well, it's not engineeringly unfeasible to put it here. You're just saying it would be difficult. I mean, in Manhattan, you've got towers over miles and miles and miles of subway tracks and pipes and electricity conduits and whatever. So it's not necessarily unfeasible. It'd just be a little more expensive, perhaps. Is that a yes? When you talk to the town engineer, was there a great, it didn't There's sound no like town, there was no town engineer. Yeah. Mike, Mike is the administrative assistant to the uh, sewer care. department. He has no technical role. No. 
I mean, there is no RFP out for this site. I don't um, know that there is interest in having the site. We found one that meets all the requirements uh, that, you know, but for the fact that it's not an overlay district, um, otherwise meets all the requirements. You do have the waiver rights. Um, we, will we will cover an area that needs coverage right now. We need it, uh, the public safety uh, departments indicated the need for coverage. Uh, we would build this quickly and we would be able to work with the town to get their equipment up so that we can meet the needs of the fire and police department. Um, and um, I mean, without it, with this other site being a big unknown, um, I, and I don't know that it would be one that we would be able to consider. So. Mr. Sarzinski asked a question of your engineers that it may have put him on a spot, but he asked a question that's not impossible, it's just expensive. Is that correct or is that not correct? Uh, it's not impossible. You can construct over, over, the, over the pipe. There's, there are methods that you can use to construct. Sorry, the, con the concern would be uh, if, if the town were my client, and someone told me that they wanted to put something over a primary pump line. Should there be some sort of failure in that line and it need to, needed to be serviced, it's going to be very difficult to get in there and service that line if there's a tower or an equipment shelter built over the top of it. And it's going to cause some grief in the future. Um, and, and that would be the concern. Can we build over the top of it? Yes. Can we guarantee that the pipe below it will never have a problem? I would say the answer to that is no. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Is that pumping station for Hadley's sort That's line? a Hadley, that's Hadley's. Amherst. Yeah. Um, Hadley owns it. Right, but it's for Amherst's sewer system, right? And Hadley's sewer okay, system. So both. I both. believe it takes the sewer from down, uh, not stuff, is it Stockbridge that brings it down? Correct. It takes it from, it does take it from the Amherst pump station, it just takes it from Stockbridge Street and it takes up from 47. That it, it ends at that at that corner. Yeah, but doesn't. But it, I'm saying it comes down night comes down nightly road Stockbridge night Stockbridge road there right goes, Stockbridge. It comes down Stockbridge Street. I'm not, not sure, sure what the flow direction is. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering if it it's it's to the Connecticut it's River. What I was no, wondering. No, it doesn't. They, they, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Not it doesn't anymore. Work. Oh, yes, it does. Oh, they used no. to, there used to be a Amherst outflow that went under Hibbert's Farm right, and right, down right, to the Connecticut right. River, but the, uh, no one's allowed to discharge sewage into the river anymore. No. The okay. Amherst still pumps down Stockbridge Street and goes out to the river there, however the road is. Okay. But the old sewer line that ran basically from Edwin's house down Stockbridge and out to here was sleeved 20-something years ago. Mm -hmm and separated from the outflow line, so it became two separate lines. And what I'm wondering is, does some of the sewer from basically where, if you would, where Mike grew up, come down this way, down to the pump station, and then power pump flow back? That's what I, that's what I don't know. I guess I'm curious if the select board did know about this, if they you know, would take a look at this because, I mean, there's clearly some road that goes past where the building is that maybe, you know, I don't know if that's for parking or not, but there's room to the side. They, I mean, maybe the select board can, you know, with the DPW, can reconfigure a little bit to create some more room towards the back and then it might be more feasible. I mean, you know, you have the access road blocked off, but maybe that can be reconfigured. Well, we do have a time element here, and I don't, again, with the unknown, um, not knowing this would ever work, um, we otherwise meet the requirements that, you know, that, we, that we need under the Telecommunications Act. Um, when this uh, district was created, the overlay district, um, you know, coverage wasn't really considered, so there was, there was some ambiguity, there was some just, um, you know, it was ambiguous when they kind of created this district. Um, we're trying to cover an area of town that doesn't have coverage. Um, and I would say that, you know, this needs to be done now and not delayed any further maybe, as far as... Maybe we should just visit, revisit that. It's not an area of town that doesn't have coverage, as I understand it. It's an area of town that doesn't have coverage to the standards Verizon chooses to offer. Right. And, and that the public safety officers need, as they testified, 
and they are anxious to also have their equipment put up. But this being half a mile away from your other site, it would cover if the same. We way. wouldn't be here for another site if we didn't need this second site. Right, but so. the, the site that we're talking about, the Stockford Road pump station, is only a half a mile south of the site. Right, and, it is, and, a, and from a cover That's standpoint, too, it does doesn't cover, I mean, we will have a little bit more coverage with the site that we're proposing, too. This is closer to, to our current site. So, um, again, you do have the ability. It only goes, I don't know, a mile, two mile, a mile and a half north of that. I mean, it's not. Call it two miles. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that the select board would be so keen on, on the site knowing that we would have the issue with the underground infrastructure. I, I mean, I think they would be concerned about the safety of the for the town and that would mean to, to not have another structure on top of, of the pipe. But I think it's a worthy conversation. I think I feel a little obligated since you're supposed to be in, you know, the wire of the zone and this is in the zone and it wasn't fully explored that the select you know, I think we should well, again, the, 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 first the zone wasn't we, scientifically drafted at the time. Um, it just seemed to be, you know, appropriate to put in the business district. We found a site that is appropriate that has a disturbance where we spent a lot of time with being concerned about the visual impact and building a site, you know, proposing a, a stack that mimics what's already there so people won't even know that there's a telecommunications facility on the site. We had a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of time uh, working with the, we have the MOU with the FCC for the site. Um, we've gotten all the approvals that we needed. We've gotten all through all the barriers, which we showed in our PowerPoint, all the 10 or 12 different issues that we have to be concerned about and hurdles we have to go over before we even consider a site satisfactory and a, a, a viable candidate. And we, you know, who knows what we would else we would find. But I, I think we would stop right at the point that we're on top of a, a pipe. Knowing, knowing Verizon Wireless. But I would imagine the pipes are not to the back of that parcel. Uh, do you have a layout of where exactly the pipes are on the parcel? The t town does not have that. We asked for that. That would have been helpful to We tried. Yeah. We, we, we reached out. I, I spoke to Gary, and I forget Gary's last name. Carter. Gerard. Gerard, yes. And uh, he said they have no drawings on record for that facility. More than so that's hard to believe. That's hard well, to believe. I mean, it, I'm, no, I, I'm not disputing you. I'm, I'm not, we're not disputing you. Yourself. This site was only built. Um, what, he said in the 80s. 30 years ago? Yeah, yeah the early 80s, 82, 81. It's hard to believe they wouldn't have. Gary's only been with the town for about three or four years. Yes. So uh, he w would have no memory of that, but others in the department would have. Yeah. Yeah. And one one question, uh, in as much as that you brought up the fact that the uh, sewer pumping station site is adjacent to a a wetlands area, there would be some wetlands concern. And looking at your site uh, that's proposed, it's next to the same ditch, and it's just not clearly delineated. Has there been any conservation commission? Uh, order of intent or notice on that? Yeah, we received a negative determination last June from the Conservation Commission. The drainage swale that's located just to the south of the proposed facility is not a regulated resource area. It's a dry drainage swale, essentially constructed in uplands. The, the resource that's located on the subject property is out in the frontage, uh, the access drive, and it's actually an extension of the same drainage uh, feature that's located adjacent to the uh, pump station property. So we did delineate that feature. We do have an at our start of our proposed access drive in proximity to it, um, but we received a negative determination for our proposed facility. You mean they visited a site and said it was not a wetlands area? Yes, yep, I was there. I was personally there during the site walk with the chairman and the wetland agent, the conservation agent. And it, I can testify right now to you that I've, I'm a wetland professional, and it is not a wetland resource area. I can testify that sometimes the water comes in. There was a three-foot washout from that ditch when it wasn't properly constructed. Yeah, and I'm not saying that it doesn't convey stormwater, but it doesn't meet the definition for intermittent water, intermittent stream. 
per the Wetland and the, and the other point the too, I, I was under the impression that the tower that you're putting up was going to be located right between the other towers. No, this one is... It's off to the side. It's not next to it. it uh, you're right. It never was. It was always presented as being well, off to the side. That's kind of my impression because when I saw one of the balloons floating a year ago, I thought it was floating from uh, more north of north. All, all the pictures they showed us two weeks ago showed it nearly off. Yeah, I, I, I agree. So. so what's the board's preference? Ask them to go to the board of selectmen or make a motion? We've got to do something. Well, has the determination been made by our town council Bill, uh, yes. That we cannot, we don't have the wiggle room necessary. Or we no, we do. He, we, he, Joel feels that we do because of the special nature of the rights given to wireless carriers. Um, you know, they're right up there with uh, adult bookstores for and solar facilities for uh, you know, avoiding zoning. Um, well, why do we? I mean, I, I beg to differ. I didn't even stay at a holiday yet, but I mean, why do we go before the town meeting and delineate these things when we can be overruled? Uh, I, Congress I, didn't ask our opinion. Uh, they, that's, they were, that seems like a tough one. They were having a fire sale on communications. Uh, they, were, they were so busy selling off uh, frequencies that uh, they didn't want us to get in the way. Well, the, the gentleman answered my question in the affirmative that it would be possible to put a site on the town land, although more expensive. Right. right. And the fact that the water lines or sewer lines going to the site are irrelevant. It just costs more to protect them. Right. That, that, that's why just, we just for the record, I didn't say that it would be more expensive. I said that it wouldn't be advisable to town's infrastructure to construct a facility all over the top of their piping system. Um, okay. and I didn't bring costs. And I don't know that we would picture. even consider. Is it possible that we would not even try that? That would be a risk that Verizon would have to take and assess. And, uh, no, right. That, that's the point I'm asking. Is it, should we ask them to go to the Board of Select and investigate, or should we make a motion one way or the other? Um, well, um, we would ask that we, I know if there's going to be a denial, so we have to you know, request either a continuance or, or something so that we're not denied at this point. <laughs> you was that? I would ask that if maybe you take a straw or something so we know that if there's a chance to be denied that we would have the chance to ask for a continuance and talk to the board of selectmen or do something so that we don't have a denial tonight um yeah because what uh how i if i were to make such a motion to deny it i would make a motion based uh, on the board's determination that verizon has failed to demonstrate that Pump house station number seven is not feasible. Um, and what so. would be adequate testimony to give you comfort that we have provided enough information to say it's something not that the board of selectmen says they wouldn't grant it? If the board of selectmen are not interested in pursuing it, we're not going to pursue it on their behalf. We don't have that jurisdiction. Right. And they are the water commissioner, so they, they are, can. Yeah, they're the, they're the, they're the, they're the, they're the, they're the whatever we'll call it, DPW yeah, they, commissioner. They're the store yeah. commissioners. They're everything, everything relating to use of this site flows through them. Mm -hmm. So uh, if they decide it's not worth pursuing, we're not, we have no basis to pursue it on their behalf. Well, if we get a continuance and I can go talk to the board of selectmen, and even if they just if they were to say that it might be suitable, we could determine ourselves it isn't, I could come back and still get a denial, and then we would still have our, our appeal rate. So yeah. I think. OK, so um, we'll make a note that you're requesting a continuance. So um, two, two weeks, 715? I mean, what, what, we, got those, we got the zoning hearings in two weeks, but that's all that we have. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, um, this decision is going to take 
they're either the sucker are going to say they're in favor of it and they're going to say no or one way or the other. It's either going to be a yes or a no vote at that point. I'm just thinking the next uh, selectman's meeting is tomorrow oh. night, so it's oh. too quick to get on that agenda. And then the next one would be on the 19th. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. But we do have Larry Smith for Pioneer Valley Planning Commission on the 1st. And that's all we have on the 1st. Well, let's put them tentatively. If there's a slim chance they can get on the second meeting for tomorrow night, let's put them on for two weeks. If they can't make tomorrow night's meeting, we'll put them on for April 1st. How's that? At 7.15. I don't think we can get on the agenda. For tomorrow night? For tomorrow. Did you need the two days? You need, you need 48 oh, hours. Oh, hosting. Yep. That's right. I forgot about that. I think they thing. should be able to get on for the 19th. So let's just say uh, April 1. April 1 at the request of the applicant. Okay. But since it may take some time for them to figure it out with the DPW, could they just, could they walk in and talk about it unofficially so that there's... Well, I'll be in I'm going to go talk research. to them tomorrow. I'll go talk to David tomorrow. So. Talk to the neighbor, too. Talk to... Yeah. Not me. The neighbor the, in the house? The immediate neighbor. And is that the old Hibbert farm to the west? Hibbert is to the west. Yeah, so that yeah. would be Lepresky. Joe Tchaikovsky. Joe Tchaikovsky and Lepresky. Yeah, the Hibbert farm is to the um, west. to the immediate west. All right. Uh, Makretsky is to the north and east. Mm -hmm. And... Um, This is Jerome's house, right? Uh, yes. That's Jerome, Hibbard. This is Kresge right here? Uh, yes. Who's this little one? I don't know who owns that one. Charlie. One of the, one of the McCretzky uncles lived there for a while. Charlie uh, Earnhardt. Okay. This it just passed away. Yeah. And this is uh, Kozakowski over here? Yes. But you said you're, you're, yeah. you're not going to be concerned about the neighbors. Uh, you know, input on this. Well, uh, we're only concerned if they're concerned. The Just like the chief of police came in and he wasn't concerned, he dealt with the tower there. You know, yeah, I'd be more concerned with the neighbors at the Johnson site because you've got more houses in that neck of the woods. I mean, it's a little, they're a little further away than these neighbors, but there's a significant population up there looking out the window at the tower. Here. But they're not going to see a tower. It's, we're not. We're not building a tower. Okay, so we have a motion to continue to April first. Request of the applicant. That a motion to request. Uh, I'll make a motion to okay. continue it. Seven fifteen on April one. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, thank you.